I've tried the drip. And I have to tell you that I haven't felt no back pain for the first time in 30 years. Hemp work has helped me tremendously. I used to have redness and my joints would swell up. And four months ago, I started taking the oil. And the coffee has a little special ingredient in there called chaka, which is a mushroom. And the mushroom is very good for you. You feel happier, so you're getting out there. You might start exercising. And your stomach just feels like it's not bloated all the time. Love my coffee. Been drinking it for two months now. I actually had a review. <laughs> I'm working remote. And... <clears throat> was told by my um, supervisor that they have noticed um, my productivity, an increase in my productivity. So thank you, Prime. You helped me get my raise. Here, I want to just shout out to all of the hemp works people who are buying the coffee, the oils. But something that hasn't been talked about is this deep conditioning hair mask. Now, I'm 55, I have to say, yeah, I'm gonna just brag a little bit because my hair has never looked so good. So inside, you can see there's like these little seeds, which is organic hemp seed oil. It's really good for the hair. So just wanted to say, try it, you'll love it. I'm really happy with my hair. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, Prime talks about this all the time, right? You know, Prime is the uh, Prime Minister of the Drip. And, um, and I can understand why. Um, I use this every day, twice a day, uh, and the enjoyment is on multiple levels. Since I've drank this cup of coffee, I feel relaxed. I feel like my whole being is now relaxed. <laughs> this good stuff, really, wow. Howdy there. How are you, my sister? Can you hear me? Yes. Hold on. I'm having difficulties. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I was checking out your TikTok. I'm oh, well, yeah. as we as we wait as we wait for Bryce. There she goes. And uh, how are you, Bryce? I'm so good. How are you? Pretty good. I was talking to Elizabeth, and I was enjoying her uh, her TikTok. Oh, she's awesome! I'm so glad she got to come on with you guys, you today, because she's amazing. Yeah. I feel like I'm too old to really understand how to do TikTok. I have to take like multiple takes when I share my information, but this girl's good. Yeah, and you know what? You're, give, you're, 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 you're giving you're giving people a whole lot in like a really short period of time the way you do it. It's really nice, right? Especially for younger generations that are not really wanting to sit down and research, you know, you're just giving them the yeah. information. Well, make sure you guys yeah, follow like you. Yeah, so all, all you TikTokers, her, her information is in the description box. So make sure you subscribe to her on TikTok and, and, and go ahead and blast her up. But um, I want, how you doing, Bryce? Good to see I'm you again. So, well, I'm, well, I'm good. I feel like we're all at like the point of just like wanting yeah. to pull our hair out right now. But how are you guys doing? <laughs> doing good. I'm going to tell you, I really, I really want to get down to it. Who's that guy right there? Who's that? It's her baby. Beautiful. How bless you. How bless you. Your mommy. I thought you were so young. <laughs> Isn't he adorable? Yeah. <laughs> so, Bryce. Yes. This is what I want to talk to you about because I know that you have some background in this, you some information on this. The gospel according to Q. Ooh. So I'm going to just give you the flow, but let me just ask you a question because yeah. <clears throat> when Q started to come out, mm -hmm. and when they started talking about the plan and what's going on let me go ahead and put for the sake of what we're talking about today why not go ahead and put uh put the boss up there put the boss up there why not for today <laughs> and um and, um when i started to really understand the plan and i began to understand you know obviously i've been knowing about the illuminati for years but mm -hmm. i said god has to be involved in this because i kept saying okay you know you're dealing with 
intergalactic demonic entities, you know, the multi-dimensional, yep. Dimensional, you know, this is not just like the Republicans are taking down the Illuminati. Like, come on. No. So said, no, 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 something, something. I said, God, God is involved in this somewhere. And I said that early on. And then strange things started coming out about time travel. And I'm mm -hmm. like, now it's starting to it's starting to make sense because it can't just be just some political plan or really guys came up with a really good plan. I'm like, all right, okay. So then this popped up. Wow. The yeah. gospel according to Q. And I said, the gospel according to Q. Now I've been studying the Bible for years. I never heard of that. You know, I never heard, I don't know where it came from. So then I said, let me look. I ordered it and I and I went and I went and I looked it up and I said, then it says, well, Q means, let me just put this up on the screen. Then I'm going to give it to you. You tell us what you know. Well, um, it means Kuel or life force, right? It means source. Mm -hmm. And source means God. God, yeah. So does this mean that what we call Q in term Q intelligence is actually a divine God source working with the Q intelligence? I mean, it, I'm going to leave it I, to you. What I, do you know? So I grew up in a very conservative Christian home. However, my parents were very um, grounded people. Like we didn't grow, it, we're Southern, you know, like in the Southern churches down here in the South, like we're all Protestants and evangelicals and we go to church twice a week, but my parents drank and cursed and, you know, but we were, cons you know, but we grew up, you know. Shout out to them for the cursing. Yeah, they, 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 as my, my mama says, we like to dance and drink too. You know? yeah. So, so they, my dad always used to say, God has a sense of humor. It's fine. <laughs> so, so culturally, I was very much a part of a church growing up. Elizabeth's nodding. She's she's from the south too. She gets it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, but I've always loved God, and I've always had a a, a very spiritual side. But I started to kind of push back against like the church because there was a lot of things that were happening that we know. I mean, man's fallible. That no church is perfect. Right. And it was like if you stepped out of this box just a little bit, you were like cast down. Pretty much. And I started to realize as I got older that there's a lot of like mind control tactics with the church. Pretty For example, much. they would be like, and I've said this a lot, and it really makes me mad now when I see people, you know, they talk about you believing in Jesus. You have to believe in Jesus. Right. And so they would say, do you believe in Jesus? And you'd be like, yeah, I do. And they'd be like, are you sure you do? Are you sure you sure you do? Do you really, really believe? And so you start like, especially when you're young, you're like, well, I, I don't know. Like you start to questioning yourself. And right. so I ended up as an adult, um, I ended up spending uh, before everything started happening, we go back and forth to India. And so I invested a lot of time studying uh, with my yoga teacher and studying like yoga philosophy. And I started to see the correlations between a lot of Jesus's teaching and just focusing on Jesus's teaching. Well, I knew there were other books of the Bible. Like I always knew that they existed. Yeah. However, it wasn't until I started, one day I was on David Zublick's program on the Dark Outpost and I just said, I'm kind of interested in going through all these books. And next thing I know, we're doing a whole series on it. And so one of my things I love to do is research. And so I went, when I started to realize that, you know, I've said this on multiple shows and I'll say it again, God, Satan, Lucifer, the devil, whatever you want to call that being is a lot of things but stupid ain't one of them. Right, right, I believe that, so yeah. So the church, the start of the Christian church, which really kind of dogmatically started with Constantine the Great in the fourth century with the Council of Nicaea was corrupt from the very beginning. So when Jesus, so we're gonna talk about the Gospel of Q. When Jesus was alive um, as a human being, when he came to earth as a human being, um, they of course had the Torah, and the, uh, there's other books, too, that they had that came with the, the Jewish culture, which right. you know, Christianity should be, should be Judaism 2.0. But we don't celebrate any of the Jewish holidays. And there's a reason why most, most of our holidays are Satan, are Satan holidays or satanic holidays. Right. There's a reason for this. Um, so Jesus is out there. And one of my favorite books, by the way, that partners with the Gospel of Q is the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. I literally cried my way through that book. It is the most amazing it's like the gospel of all gospels and we'll, we'll get to that too because it partners with q um so when when jesus was doing his thing now you think about it like in our times if we, we and we kind of spoke about this last time um prime when Trump is out there speaking he always draws a crowd right 
Right. He, he draws a crowd. Jesus was the same way. He drew a crowd. People, and at that point, the where G, that whole Middle Eastern area always has been in conflict um, until brought peace to the Middle East. But now we, we are where we are now. But um, he, Jesus was pushing back against not just yeah. rabbis, yeah. but the Roman Empire that had infiltrated. The right. Greeks had infiltrated the Gentiles, as they were called. And again, anybody, uh, all three of us on this program are a Gentile. All Gentile is someone who's not Jewish. Right. So all, all of us are, are Gentile. Um, our, our ancestors were Gentile. So at that point, a lot of these little villages around the Dead Sea, around the door, all those areas where Jesus, Naz, like where, wherever, where everywhere, where everywhere, he, everywhere he went, experiencing now, they had, they were watched, they were controlled. Um, there was kind of this like resistance happening. And so it was the perfect time for the promise of the Messiah to come because okay. when okay. he came now, one thing it's, it, you know, when Jesus was born, he was not born. Like when we think of like the son of God being born, we think of him being born in this beautiful, like mansion and, you know, but he was born basically in a stable with his parents and all the animals. And in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, you know, Jesus does push vegetarianism and he he talks a lot about like, you know, don't beat an yeah, don't beat animals. And we'll get to some of the changes made in the Bible at the Council of Nicaea regarding that, because they did edit the Bible too, you guys, and we'll talk about that. Um he yeah. keeps saying, you know, your your the animals are your brothers and sisters. Do they not breathe the same air you breathe? And you think about God created the animals too. So is, 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 that, is that is that in one of the lost books that mm -hmm. he said that? Yeah, it's the partner book of Q, which, which, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. So when he was gathering all of his disciples, all the apostles, we know the main 12, the like the main stars, the 12, but he had multiple other. There were at least 70 people traveling with him at all times. And a lot of them were women. And it, he actually ordained women to also go out and teach. There is a, one scene in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve where a woman is sitting at his feet, listening to him talk, and her someone gets mad at her, like, "Oh, you should go be making him food. Like that's your job. Get in the kitchen." And Jesus stops the person and was like, "No, her soul is just as valuable as yours. She can stay." And so there was these revolutionary ideas that Jesus was teaching. Right. Um, anyway, so when he when he was crucified, so basically, I think we need to look at that differently as not crucifixion, but an execution. He was executed politically. He was executed because he rocked the boat. I mean, how many times have they tried to do that to people on our side of the fence now? How many times have they succeeded at doing that, a.k.a. You know, um, so when he and there's this beautiful. So at Passover, according to the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, the last thing that happened with Jesus before he was killed, basically, as most Christians know, was Passover. And the law of Moses that the, that the Jewish people lived by that time, they had to sacrifice a lamb before Passover to eat. And Jesus would not allow the apostles to do that. He said, absolutely not. You will not say, no sacrifice, not sacrificing an animal is not gonna take away your, your, your sins. It's not gonna pay for your atonement. And then he says, I am the sacrificial lamb. I am the lamb that is to be sacrificed. Anyway, and so when Judas runs off and tells, you know, the, the rabbis what's going on, he's charged with his execution. He's not just charged with blasphemy. He's also charged with breaking the laws of Moses because he refuses to participate in the actual laws of Moses. And he keeps saying throughout the uh, Gospel of the Holy Twelve, but a, a greater one than Moses is here. Like I am I, my my Moses was just a man. I am I am the promised Messiah. Right. So there's a beautiful scene in the Bible and in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve with Pontius Pilate, where Pontius Pilate does not want to execute Jesus. Like he don't want to do it. Right, it's very right. The gospel. And and Jesus like absolves him of that, and Jesus basically forgives him in a very calm way and says, "You are doing this because it is your job. My my father gave you this job. This has to be done." Right. And I think we forget sometimes that even though Jesus was man, God in human form, he still was in human form. He still had a nervous system, right? So the pain that he experienced yeah. during his death. I mean, it's overwhelming to even think about, but he knew it had to be done. Well, after Jesus was crucified and after he came and saw the disciples again, all of the disciples, all of the apostles had basically a warrant out for their arrest. 
I mean, think about what we're going through right now. All of us who are in this community, we put ourselves out there. We know what the outcome is going to be, but if we didn't know what the outcome was going to be, we would all probably have warrants out from, you know, yeah, if we, the, hey, we would be, hey, we would be dead anyway. Listen, we'd be dead anyway. <laughs> what are we going to do? We're gonna do you know, I know, right? Right. So they, all of the, all of these disciples had to like skedaddle. They had to like get the heck out of Dodge. And, right. the, and a lot of the missing gospels actually goes over them, their moments before they realize they have to leave. And they're the departed. They've lost Jesus as any human being. He's in spirit, but they've lost their leader. And right. now these people that they've lived with for all these years, these friends, these families, they're not going to have to leave. And so that's when we see them all going out um, you know, Mark went to, to Egypt, Mary Magdalene went to France, Gaul at the time, uh, Philip went to uh, Turkey. Some of them did cross paths with each other. Then we had Paul. Most of the New Testament, as we know it, was written by was Paul's letters. And Paul was a Gentile. He experienced Jesus after death. Well, so let's get to, to what I'm leading up to. When the disciples, the apostles all left their hometown, they took all they could. Obviously, they took what we call the Old Testament in the Christian faith, the Torah and other books with them. That was what they had. And they had two other because there was no New Testament yet. No New Testament was was available yet. They had two books with them that would that would make up what we the stories we know in the New Testament. That was the book of Q and the gospel of the Holy Twelve. OK, let me just let me just let me, let me just let me just. OK. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's just stop for a second. Okay, what are the chances, okay? I'm just a common sense kind of person. What <laughs> are the chances that the book that ultimately is the genesis of mm -hmm. the gospel of salvation is called the book of Q? And the plan to save the world is from Q. There's no connection at all, it's all coincidence. In my opinion, there is a huge connection, but I can't prove it until we have all the information. Um, and, and for and who, knows so, who, got the answer? who got the answer? God, Trump probably has the answer. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> the thing is, so when when the New Testament was written, what most people have to remember is that Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the four gospels that we know were not written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were written by their students or the students of their students. A lot of these guys couldn't write. And that was common. Like it was it was rare to find someone that could actually read and write. Although they were very well educated in like the, the Jewish temple. And a lot of like Philip, um, I think uh, Thomas was Didymos. A lot of them had Greek, they could speak Greek so they could like translate, but did, does not mean that they could actually read and write. And so what we have now is we have, if we just look at the four canonized gospels, the four of them. There's way more, but let's just look at the four that everybody knows, especially the first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. If you go through it, even with the English translations, you are going to see identical passages. Now, guys, back in those days, they didn't have the internet. They didn't have cell phones. They were in these little pockets all over the Mediterranean up into like the Roman Empire. These these schools were these these what we would call a church. Now they were kind of schools then. So how is it that these students writing down these stories were writing the exact same thing down? That's because they had hard copies of the actual stories. This was the book of Q and the gospel of the Holy Twelve. Okay, Especially so, okay, okay, okay. Let's just stop one more time. It's so exciting. <laughs> I, I, because I'm trying to understand something because, you know, I've studied this all my life. I've studied the Bible. I've spent all my life in the Christian bookstores, spending all my money buying everything. Every mm -hmm. mysterious book that had anything to do about a prophecy or a mystery or a Dead Sea Scroll or the Book of Enoch or anything that was spiritual, I wanted to know it. I never heard of the book. I never heard of this book. And Me neither. From Until what this year. <laughs> and, and, and I was starting to wonder, did this book manifest by way of time travel? But that's another story. Let me ask you a question. When we read the gospel, and we, when we say gospel, we're actually talking about a testimony, a eyewitness mm -hmm. testimony of whatever, whatever, whatever. So to say the gospel according to Q would mean that you're actually saying this is the testimony of God. Possibly, yes. That God now, somehow when, manifested and allowed this scripture to be documented for people to record it. And let me tell you guys, now with the gospel according to Q, we don't have, some of it's still missing. 
Um, now, let me explain that. There are supposed to be, get this, my friends, this is how much we've been lied to. There are supposed to be, in our full Bible, 777 books. Right. We only got like 60 of them. And I always say like 60 because different denominations have different stuff. So it's like 60. Right. So what happened is for the first couple of hundred of years that this Christian faith was growing, especially up into the Roman Empire, which the Roman Empire was huge at that time. Right. Um, Christianity was illegal. And we've heard stories of how the Christians, especially in like the Roman Empire, were thrown into the Colosseum yeah. to have the lions eat them. It was sport for the Romans. I mean, I know if if you're if you're white, you got Roman heritage. So yeah, our ancestors were pretty brutal. I think all of us have ancestors at some point that were pretty brutal. That was pretty brutal. Well, all of, man, all, of all of mankind is murderous. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's one thing I like that this, this whole narrative right now. I'm like, no, guys, all of humanity has got a dark past. Every mm -hmm. single person you keep going back, you're going to find. I just did a whole breakdown on Genghis Khan. Don't even get me started on what they were doing over there. It was you, know, you, don't have, you don't have to look far. You know, it's not much farther than your very neighbor, your own relatives, your best friend from high school. They all look low lives and pieces of shit, aren't they? Aren't they? We know the truth. Yeah. I mean, what did Martin Luther King? I mean, I'm in the home of Martin Luther King Jr. You judge someone by the content of their character, Pretty not much. the color of their skin. Pretty Assholes much. come in every race. Assholes come in every race. Every race. So. You Thank, you. Thank you for saying that. True. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, so at this point, Christianity, as it was growing in the Roman Empire, was attracting the lower class. So the people who were really like the peasantry class. And when I say peasantry class back in the Roman Empire, I'm not talking about poverty that we see in America. I'm talking about like legit poverty. Right. And this was this was a there the teaching was like you in the Roman Empire was multiple gods. A lot of the religions had at this time had multiple gods, sacrifices were happening, a lot different cultures that human sacrifice, you know, all these like you're you're constantly like wheeling and dealing for your salvation in all these other religions. And right. so here are these people being taught now that God actually loves you. You're a peasant, you have nothing, you're spit on by the elites, but God loves you. And this guy, Jesus, he came and he died for you right. so that you can have this relationship, this, this untouchable bond with your creator. And once this life is over, you will be, you will be living in the spirit of God. And so it attracted the lower classes. Now, the upper classes were practicing a faith called Mithraism. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about Mithraism because that would take us all day, but it's basically Luciferianism as we know it. Okay. Um, they sacrificed uh, all that kind of stuff. And it, it was, they, they had secret handshakes. What does that remind you of? Um, they had underground temples that they went to, but it was very much an elite, elite religion. Again, think of Bohemian Grove, all that kind of stuff. Right. Has it, same story. It's just, we have different clothes. You know, we, we now have phones and but it's the same, it's the same, same shit. It's all the same stuff. Um, and so when, when Constantine the Great, as or I call him Constantine the Con Man, was, was a kid, his father was kind of like the governor, the emperor of, at that point, the Roman Republic had been divided up into, into territories. So kind of like a republic, kind of like the United States where we have, it's so big, so we have our own little territories with our governors and, you know, we're supposed to have more states' rights. It's kind of how the Roman Empire was at that time, which in my opinion is what made it so successful. Right. Well, Constantine decides after his father dies in 30, I think his dad died in 306 AD, that he wants to now take over the whole Roman Empire. Now, at this point, guys, all roads lead to Rome. Yeah. Rome was like it. If you didn't live in the Roman Empire, you were just desolate. And so this was a big deal. Constantine was going after his own little new world order, basically. So Constantine had to go up against a guy named Max Ascentius. And Max Ascentius was the Central Europe governor. Now, everything is inverted. Everything we've been taught, just flip it. Our, all of our textbooks, everything is like CNN. It's like, it's fake. They've, they've inverted everything. So the history books will tell you that Max Ascentius was the bad guy and Constantine was this wonderful guy, but nothing could be further from the truth. Max Ascentius in his little territory in the Roman Empire. Isn't, that int isn't, it, isn't it interesting how they can, and it's one of the things in the Bible that says that God hates when you call good evil and evil good. And uh, here we are, we have saving the world and people hate his guts. 
He I know, and there are so many Christians life. that think he's the Antichrist. And I'm like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's strange. And you think Biden's going to save you? Like, what? Right. Can you help me? But yeah, but the revelation does say that at the end of time, every at this time, I don't think the world's going to end. We're going to go into a new timeline, but that everything will be inverted and flipped. You know, right. it's, 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 it's mind yeah, blowing. Yeah. It's amazing it's that we mind- fought for it. Yeah, it's mind blowing. And so Max Ascensius sees what's happening with, with Constantine. Now, Max Ascensius had already kind of accepted this. Like at this point, the Christian faith was kind of this weird new faith. It was like this weird, like, okay and he kind of like accepted it like kind of i kind of get the vibe that he was kind of live and let live like you do you boo like that's fine whatever you know and um and so he already kind of had accepted it but he had never like made it official um but in in constantine territory what he did is he passed an edict that said that the, this new christian faith is now not illegal so you can't be thrown into this coliseum and eaten devoured by lions if you're a christian and so what this started was a manipulation right, because right. a lot what do people who are really poor do sometimes today to get out of their situation they sign up for the military which i love our military don't get me wrong thank you so much to the military because you guys are literally asses right now so thank right. you right. um so a lot of these people who are poor they're they're soldiers some of them are forced to be soldiers and so this little trick that Constantine does uh, gets more people to fight for him, more manpower. And so basically, I'm going to kind of skim over stuff. Cliff Notes version, Constantine. It also, it also stopped it from spreading, too. Yeah. Well, but, yeah. And he- but, but another but another thing, too, about that, because I do know about that, you know, the, the fact that um trying to avoid persecution. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, you know, they, yeah. they, they allowed it, the church to become watered down. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, you compromise your overall real true mission because you're trying to avoid persecution. Yeah, and not even watered down completely changed from the original teachings. When when mm-hmm. Constantine won, Con- guys, Constantine was never, he never, you know, they, they, the whole story of him like having this epiphany in the battle where he sees the cross and sees God, that story, he told that story like 10 or so years after it happened. There's no archaeological evidence. He made that up. That's what we call spiritual manipulation nowadays for like cults. Um, mm-hmm. That never happened. Constantine, there's, from all the proof we had, he he was a Canaanite, satanic, Mithraic practitioner until the day he died. Just to, just to tell you guys a little story about Constantine. Um, after he supposedly had this experience where he found God, he then proceeded to have his own son executed along with his second wife boiled alive executed because he heard a rumor that they were having an affair. If oh. you found the love of Jesus, yeah. is that how you would behave? No, but there's some, there's, there's some women out there that I know for a fact will definitely boil you alive for sure. <laughs> You alive. That's like that's like a good thing. <laughs> that's some low down stuff. Well, so Constantine, after he like gets control of this empire, and guys, I want you to also notice that every time this happens, the world collapses. And I believe that the dark ages that Rome fell into soon after was totally orchestrated by the cabal. Because they at that point they took all the information from the Library of Alexandria. We human beings were excelling in knowledge and information, and they totally squashed that. So I think that was part of the cabal's plan. Because the cabal's been the cabal has been around literally since the beginning of time. It's all over the Bible, the Old Testament. It's all over the missing books. The missing books of the Old Te- Testament basically tell you. They, they tell you that all over the missing books of the Old yeah. Testament, which is why we don't have access to them, I believe. They don't want you to know the full truth. So um, Canaanite has this Council of Nicaea that he sets up in 325 AD. He is now going to create a dogma. He is going to create an established church. So he brings all these bishops. There were already bishops. We had, you know, church fathers like Polycarp, like all these guys that have kind of already been around before. All these bishops that have been ordained by the original. So they come and meet meet Constantine at Nicaea, the Council of Nicaea, and they're going to put together an actual Bible. Now, here's the thing about Constantine, and I encourage everybody to go to the website, the Nazarene Way, because they do a really good job of explaining what happened. Constantine is a dictator at this point. We know many dictators in our world. What happens with- I thought you were gonna say he's a dick. <laughs> that's what I, well, that's I all the time. <laughs> uh, oh my God, that's great. 
He's a dictator. What we'll use that for the, he's a dictator. He's a dictator. Yeah. Oh, he's so, actually, I would probably use a lot worse word than that, but he's, he's a psychopath. Like this guy's a psychopath. What happens if you go up against a dictator? <laughs> not, not good news for you, right? right? So these bishops didn't, it wasn't really a discussion. There was no like studying these scriptures and figuring it out. It was literally like he said what was gonna go in these this Bible and you just agreed or else he was gonna either have you executed or he was gonna starve you out. Like this was serious stuff. So I don't blame the bishops. They were trying to survive. They're trying to protect their families. I think God also knows that. Um, and so they basically got rid of over 700 books. Now I, we only have okay, about- okay, 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 so they got rid of the books. What was in the books that they were trying to get rid of in your opinion? Well, we only have about, the Vatican Library still has these books. And the Vatican Library obviously has not released any of these books. The right. books that we have, the f about 45 that we now have that were heretical banned, um, we found in excavations. That's okay. the only reason why we have them. We, 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 we can, but we can assume that they, in order to control us, to control oh, yeah. the population, we cannot have these books because then we won't be uh, easily controlled. So exactly. what? But we don't know what that information is. So the new the, the New Testament books I've read. So there is almost every uh, apostle had his own gospel. Yeah. Uh, Mary had her gospel. Um, and there's apparently Jesus did know how to read and write. So here's the thing about Jesus as well that people don't. He wasn't as poor as they teach us he was, uh, which doesn't matter. Like it, it doesn't really your your worldly wealth means nothing to God. Um, it's the value of your heart. But Jesus, uh, he was a carpenter, which is also, we kind of talked about this last time, uh, Prime. Carpenter also translates into architect, a builder. So he was not, he was not like this lowly, like, you know, street dealer, wheel and he, he actually had an education to like, he could have designed a building if he wanted to. And this is what archaeologists have found. And so a lot of that is mistranslation from the original text. Um, and so he would have, there is apparently a gospel that Jesus himself wrote. Uh, allegedly, that gospel was taken with Mary up into France, and they have, they've been looking all over the area where the Cathars were to see if they can find it. Unfortunately, the Pyrenees, France, in that South France area, a lot like where we live on the East Coast, if there was a book hidden, it probably has completely disintegrated by now, whereas the other books were found in Egypt in the Middle East, and because of their atmosphere, they were, they didn't totally disintegrate, that's why we have them. Um, but I, I guarantee you the Vatican has that book. So a lot of these gospels, the books from the New Testament that would have been in our New Testament are very freeing. They're very freeing. It's That's very much true. like you don't need, and, and the gospel of the Holy 12 is basically the whole story of Jesus's life. And so you can see every detail of Jesus's life, the missing years from, from 13 to 30, those years are all in that book where he, what he was doing. Um, Which the is fact also that, 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So what, 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 okay. Listen, this is what I'm trying to figure out. Who is, who's the man who wrote this? Who wrote this? I have no idea. Who is Maybe, this guy? Maybe Jesus. I don't know. Who I don't know. We only have parts of it. We don't even have the whole thing. So let, let, me, let me ask Elizabeth. Elizabeth, 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 Elizabeth <laughs> you're, you're a lot younger than us. Elizabeth, you're a lot younger than us. Can can you give us your, your, your thoughts on this? Who do you think wrote this book? And it, do you think there's a connection between this and the Q intelligence that's saving the world? Or is this just a coincidence? Because that's a strange coincidence to pop up in the very final hours. You don't think so? Yeah. No, yeah. I, I have no idea who, who wrote it, but I have a feeling that it contains a lot of, like, the power that we've lost the in ourselves. Mm-hmm. The know, sovereignty. The innate because that's what that's something i've been yeah this is something i've been thinking about a lot recently is like how powerful actually are we because i'm feeling it's in all these hidden books that we don't know where they are or what they say and that's the real you know uh conspiracy <laughs> is, yeah is us growing up believing that we're just like these specks of nothing floating in the universe it's like no i have a feeling that's not true <laughs> You, you, you know, Bryce, you, you know what's something that's interesting, and you, you said something very powerful, Elizabeth. Um, I think they have, I think they have uh, concealed exactly how powerful we really are, and I think that may be you, you're right. And like you said, Bryce, it is freeing. I think because this religion is very much, and no, no, you know, it's, it's a it's bondage religion. That's what I was about to say. Mm -hmm. But um, um, people who are like Jesus fanatics, 
are some of the most wicked people yes. you've ever yes. met. Yes. Oh, yes. I've, I've been in the church all my life, okay? And I had a real connection with God. So he taught me how to treat people right. Mm -hmm. He taught me that that was the most important thing in my in my walk. It wasn't about talking this way and this. It was about how I treated my brother and how I treated my sister. And I walked away from my experience with God, learning, understanding that. But when I observed a lot of Christians, they talk the talk. They're going to tell you about Daniel and the lion's den. They're going to tell you about the battle in Jericho. And they're going to rob you blind and stab you in your back in the name of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. I, I actually, I, it's interesting. I read a little article today that, you know, we think of like the Nazi party fascism and communism as being two extremes, like a right extreme and a left extreme. But this article was saying that if you go extreme enough on both sides, they end up coming together. And we're seeing that now that communism and Nazism have the same principles, same thing with Satanism and it's extreme Christianity. You end up becoming very wicked. It's very where true. Jesus, there's, you know, in, in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, it goes into so much detail that we don't really, and you can actually go through your Bible and see where things have been edited. If you refer back, you can actually see where they've edited stuff. Because as the Nazarene Way says that the 60-ish books that Constantine kept in the Bible, they then went through and used the pens of correction, where they went and changed stories in the Bible. They changed them to in order to control us to make us vulnerable, make us scared that we were not going to be in heaven with God. And, and any, Jesus said, Jesus, anything but that, like you are free. And the thing about the original, like the gospels that were taken out now, get this guys. Cause I want you to think about what is, we were just speaking about this. What is the main tool that they use to try to divide us? It's race, right? They've been doing that since the very beginning. They've been trying to divide us by race. Well, guess what these missing books of the Bible say? You're not your race. You're not your body. Right. Your skin color is just a suit for this life. Right. You're, and that's what yoga actually teaches us too. Your, your meat suit that you're wearing, meat. it's just your vehicle. You and God, will, yeah, it's just, it's just a meat suit. That's all it is. Meat. Your soul, your spirit, your, your, the, this essence of you that is, is, is immortal has absolutely nothing to do with your natural body. It's, it's it's and that's and that's so freeing when you really and so what do they want us to do they keep wanting to divide us divide us by race by gender by sexuality by you know country they constantly want and most people in this world don't really give a crap about what what you look like i feel like most people really just don't care if right. you're an asshole you're an asshole but they well, keep trying to like do and, an, and another thing too and I, and I and i try to tell this people all the time if you ever look at like um really young children at a young age yeah. before, before before they get programmed and dipped in the MK ultra and get all, you know, yeah. twisted all up and he talked to the dad and mom and everybody screws you up. Uh, little kids, they don't, they don't, that's a, that tells you where, you know, where it comes from. Cause it doesn't, it doesn't come right out of the womb. You they, know, there, there's this beautiful story I read a few years ago of these two little boys. They were probably like three or four years old in preschool. One was a white kid. One was a black kid. And they decided that they wanted to get the same haircut so their teacher wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Right. And right. one was black, one was white. And they, they were so blind to the fact that they had two different color skins that they thought they got the same haircut. Their teacher wouldn't tell them apart. Like how adorable and precious and pure is that? That's pure. Yeah. These children are coming straight from that light. They're coming straight from God. Right. And that's how they're seeing people. They're not seeing people by what they look like. Right. They're seeing people by their heart. What a, you what know? a sick, twisted world we live in. But let me just let me just throw something in here because you know, shout out to Mr. Kennedy, uh, who's always watching. He's always watching over us. And uh, but let me just say this, right? Okay. Right. So we've been having this conversation about the second coming of Christ. And why does it seem like is fulfilling all of these prophecies? And why does it seem like, you know, what the Bible talked about in terms of this millennial time, this thousand years reign sounds a lot like the Great Awakening to me. That's just my opinion. Why does it seem like uh, Nasara and Jasara sounds a lot like the transfer of wealth from the wicked to the righteous, which is also predicted in the Bible. Why does it sound like all these things are culminating in this great awakening seems to be right lock and step with the things that were predicted to come? And so we started asking these questions. Uh, 
Mr. Kennedy started talking about the Messiah. He started talking about it on Telegram a bit. He started talking about um, how uh, his name is like when you start, you know, and I know you already know this, that it, has, it means yeah. God, it means it means God with man, God, man, well, seven, seven, it's all every way you twist it. It always has something to do with God. And I'm like, why is that? So I'm looking at him on Telegram just to get back to my point. And you know, Mr. Kennedy is obviously, okay. So it says, you shall find the Messiah. You shall find the secret of creation. Then he says, there will be blood. There is no forgiveness. The storm is coming soon. This is recent. He said, there's a big difference between a human and a humanoid. And then he said, and then he says this, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. He said, there is only one savior for Christians Muslims and Jews. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about the coming, the Messiah. This is cute. You know, when you're talking about Kennedy, you're talking about. Yeah, I believe that too. I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, I, you know, the thing about it is that they wanted to, at least in my church growing up, they wanted to terrify is that a mystery? us. But is that a mystery though? Yeah, I, I, what the, the mystery savior, is, is the savior of the Muslim, the Christian, and the Jew. God of Abraham, the Abraham Accord, Ab Father Abraham. You guys probably remember that song from church, Father Abraham and many sons. Well, Abraham was the first. I now we're now actually on the Dark Outpost. We're reading the Apocalypse of Abraham, which was one of the books that was taken out of the Bible, which basically tells you exactly what's going on again with the Canaanites. We'll just call them the Canaanites and the Israelites. It's basically the war that's happening. We're on the side of the Israelites, and Jesus does tell his disciples in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve many, many, many times that the Israelites are not just going to be people of Jewish descent. And they're like shocked by that because in their mind, the Gentiles are the Romans and they're brutal, but he keeps telling them, no, the Gentiles will also make up my children, the Israelites. Israelites are just people that worship the one God that are on the side of light. The Canaanites, they're on the side of darkness. All right. And that's a choice you have to make. And y'all, y'all, everyone watching, you guys know exactly what those people do in their religious ceremonies. It's not just a flip it fly by night choice where all of a sudden you end up in the wrong place. You, when you make that decision, you have made that decision. Thanks. And it is very clear. It is very clear. All this stuff that the church tries to sell you where it's only select people you have to really believe and you had to follow these rules and not do this, not this. That's not true. Right. That's why they say the Jews, the Muslims and the Christians any God loving person that ha that feels that love of God right. is considered to be an Israelite. Melissa Red Pill, the nation who has been teaching Sunday school for 35 years. And she even brought up like, the like I go to India. I love that the Hindu people. I love them. They're God loving people. They're God -loving people. Let me tell you something. The more I ascend, I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm coming from, I would rebuke you in the name of Jesus if you just said anything against what we learned in China and get Satan. I'm like, you know, it's like, what did he do to you? He's, he doesn't agree with me. Get behind me, Satan. But I'm going to tell you, I've got so many knives in my back from Christians in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, they just rob me blind and they stab you in the back all the time. And the more I ascend in this great awakening, the less it matters to me what your particular belief system, what matters to me is how you treat me more than anything, to be honest with you. I can really care less. Not saying that, I mean, your devil worship, obviously, I don't like that, but I'm just saying yeah. your particular, the way flavor. you interpret, the way, yeah, yeah. Your flavor, the way you interpret yeah. it, the way your particular, I can care less. I mean, if you treat me with respect, what'd you, what'd you say, Elizabeth? I was going to say, well, it's like we're all like, like you're saying, as we ascend, it's like we're all on a journey. So just because you're not at the point that I'm at doesn't mean I have to treat you differently. Like you'll get there and I'll get to where you are in some aspects, but it's like, it's like getting the realization that we're literally all on an equal playing field. Like mm -hmm. we're all equal. <laughs> you, you know what, you know what else I found interesting guys is that, um, I started to feel like, you know, cause we say Christian and we're, we're worshiping the creator, the one who created everything. You know, science teaches us how things that are created works, teaches us how it works. And um, and but we, we've been programmed to believe that you have to either be a person of faith or a person of science. Right. That a person of faith shouldn't really care how things work. You just believe by faith and you don't even know how it works. 
But as I as we got into this great awakening, I started to realize uh, a lot of the stuff was becoming demystified. The you know the the things of faith, the things that were unknown, the things of you know we're starting to learn about galactic light forces. We're learning about mm-hmm. uh, otherworldly life. We're learning about the Pleiades. We're learning about mm-hmm. the the various other civilizations that we called angels are now we're learning these different things. And I said, wow, it's almost seems like science and faith is coming together somehow. And at one and point in time, it was unconceivable. Yeah. Church okay, yeah. Well, the original for all of us, if you go way, 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 way back in, in history, for all of us, for our, everyone watching, wherever your ancestors came from, now most of us are mutts at this point anyway, but wherever your dominant, aunt, the, the place that you connect to the most, you go way back in history, the priest and the scientist were the same person. Wow. So the spiritual man and the scientist were the same person. Right. We had the, uh, I can't wait. I believe that the Library of Alexandria that burnt down, I think that they took all those books and took them to the Vatican as well. Um, and I can't wait to see what was in that library. I can't wait to see like what it, what our humanity, I'm not going to say like my, what our humanity's ancestors, because here's the thing, I we, my boyfriend and I joke around about all this like stuff they're trying to do, these racial divides. And we're like, we just need a good alien invasion for people on the earth to realize we're all earthlings. <laughs> We're all here together. This is our planet. Like, we don't even fight with each other. Like, we're each other's brothers and sisters. Like, we literally are each other's brothers and sisters. And so I'm going to say our ancestors in Alexandria, that what they had there at that library, the information and the fact that they took that from us. These people, these freaking people think that they're so much better than us that they can take that from us. That power of knowledge. You know, and a lot of these missing books of the Bible, especially from the Old Testament, they talk about the Garden of Eden. And Adam and Eve's fall from eating the the fruit. Actually, in the Apocalypse of John, they dis, or of uh, Abraham, they describe describe it as grapes. Most of us think an apple, but it's just described as a grape. I don't think it really matters. They ate something that that awakened them right. to understanding consciousness. Right. You know, of- you know, you know, sister, and you know, you know, the irony about religion, right? You know, trying to understand that particular element of the, of the truth, right? They'll go to war over whether or not it was a grape or an apple. Exactly. You know, <laughs> like, does it matter? Guys- you know what I'm saying? It's nuts. Um, it's crazy. Nuts. In the of Abraham, I will say when they describe Satan, the, the, the serpent, it is described like a freaking alien. It's not described like a snake. It right. reminds me of like a lizard, like a Draco is basically what it sounds like. Right. But anyway, um, when and all these books, God, when God is having these conversations, he basically says that when he created this, he knew that would happen. He knew it, but he allowed it anyway. He allowed us to have that awakening, to have that understanding of, of, of right and wrong. And when we think about the consequences of understanding, when we think about not if you're a good person, you feel pain for other people. You feel empathy. You feel, you know, you actually physically feel that when you see somebody. And that's this consequence of understanding. And so God allowed that to happen. Whatever the devil will make for evil, God will use for good. And so I think we also need to realize that when they fell from grace, when Adam and Eve fell from grace, that wasn't that was allowed by God for us to start having this understanding. There was this interesting conversation I had with Juan Osaven a long time ago where he talked about the Tower of Babel. That the Tower of Babel was actually a space force that they were building because they like realized that they wanted to get home. They wanted to get like to because I do believe the Adam and Eve story, but I also believe we have other species in us as well. I believe we carry some alien life as well. I don't think that goes against any of the Christian teaching. We've also intermated with other species too, I, I believe. Um, and so I know we, we sound, we, for people who are not awake yet, we oh, must sound really like, but you know, though, we're, all, we're always trying to spare the feelings of the Christians. <laughs> Trust me, the, the, I've had to love. I'm a, listen, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus. But I, but, but I don't, I'm not, I don't love the historical Jesus. I love, I love what he represents, justice. Mm-hmm. Love for your fellow brother. That's what I, that's what I love about Jesus. And the, the, the example that he taught us, I don't want to say Jesus all day long. I don't want to say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all the time. I don't want to do that. I want to try to be like that from the lessons that I learned from him. That's what's most important to me. That's what but, being Christian means, being Christ-like. 
but who wrote this? Where did this come from? Was somebody studying this book 20 years? Let me ask you a question. Can you show me a video of somebody yeah. studying this book 20 years ago, please? So, you, and well, you can find like, so when I research these books, what I do is I go through the whole gamut. Like I will look at what the, the mainstream narrative is saying just to see what they're saying. Then I'll go and look at what like, I'll go on like more like DuckDuckGo and find like what truthers are saying. Then I'll kind of try to find the truth and I'll read it for myself. Um, and basically everybody I think is kind of on the same page because we're missing, I mean, I have a copy of what we have as well, but we're missing so much of it that basically they've concluded that the gospel of the Holy 12 and the book of Q were the hard copies. So when they were writing Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, everything else, they were using the gospel of Q and the, to, to write these other books to get, there, think about it, guys, there was no printing press. There was no like. They had to copy. They had to copy was this, everything. Was this hand. book around 20 years ago? Listen to me. Uh, it might have been in some circles. Um, so studied this book 20 years ago. There, what? There's a there's a cool prophecy, and I can't remember if it was from the Cathars. You're not answering my question. Prophecy. Do what? You're not answering my question. I'm um, about to. I'm about to. Who studied this <laughs> book 20 years ago? So listen to this prophecy, and this might help answer your question. I think it was the Cathars. I might have to go back and check my notes that prophesized that at the end of time, <laughs> so at the end of that, all these books would start showing up, that we would start finding all these books at the end okay. of time. That started okay. in the late 19th century, throughout the 20th century, we had the Nag Hammadi Library, the Dead Sea Scrolls. This book showed up with those books. Now, with that being said, we don't actually even know who wrote most of the we know paul's letters but we don't know who wrote matthew mark luke and john it wasn't matthew mark luke and john we they were given that mark, luke, and john. that's what we thought about that was the whole thing was that this is an eyewitness testimony of they matthew, didn't write that mark, they luke didn't write john. it the and only the person that i think luke might have been like the only person that might because it wasn't he the doctor one of them was our one of them was luke, like very highly luke educated was luke was a physician. but um yeah, so he might have been able to write, but most of these books, besides Paul's letters, most of these gospels were not written by the person that was given the credit for it. They were copied by their students. So their students were like listening to the stories and they were checking. So the gospel, so the gospel of the Holy Twelve, I believe, was Even written by also. If all of the books are substantiated by this book, then we should have this book even the more so. We were studying yep. from a book called um I forget his name. He was a Jewish scholar, and we and we was uh, um, it substantiated a lot of the gospel writings. It was called, I think, not not Theophilus. It was called um, I forget his name. I haven't read this in years, but it's a great gigantic book like this. And he was a Jewish scholar who existed in the, in the first century, and he was saying, okay, this story of Jesus is true. That story is true, you know, according to the the Jewish scholars' records and so forth. I never heard this book. I never heard of this I know, book. I know. I know. I think. I think. And and, and and you know, they're they're trying to suppress a lot of this as well. So, um, I, I think in John too, John was, I believe, able to read and write as well because I think he's, a tri if I remember correctly, he's the one attributed to writing the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. So that was also a hard copy. And I really encourage. I I enjoy the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Still, is my favorite uh, book so far. He was writing the whole story down as he was seeing the interactions with Jesus, and so it was huge. It was way huge. You're trying to tell me that all of the Gospels is based on this, but nobody knows who wrote this. That's exactly what I'm telling you. And the plan to save the world is based on this, but when nobody knows if they know each other or they're connected somehow. Nobody knows. It's all a coincidence. Isn't this such a fun movie? <laughs> I can't take it, man. It's nuts. I feel like we live in the other Avenger movie. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yo, I'll be tweaking out, man. I'll be like, because, yo, you got to understand, I used to go to the Christian bookstore, and I would just be looking for some, they said, there's a book called The Dead Sea Scroll. I went and got mm -hmm. that book of Enoch. Everything I could find, I ain't never heard of this. And I'm going to tell you, all of the scholars that I listen to, all of the guys who are like um, great teachers and Bible teachers, it's impossible. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, you're studying the gospels because they were eyewitnesses to the work of Jesus. So we listen to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you're telling me that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John actually got it from him, nobody knows who this is. And they got, it, they got it from him. They got it from him and the gospel of the Holy 12. 
and we think the Holy 12 was written by John. We think. We so that was, thinking. do what? Listen, what I'm trying to ask you this, my sister, is this. Are we, are we witnessing time travel? Are we witnessing time travel on some degree? Because I'm trying to ask the question. Has anybody studied this? Huh? Okay, I'm going to say You was thinking the same thing? Yeah, I was like, someone's time traveling. Someone's time traveling. Do you, okay, okay. Let me let me let me tell you something else that's interesting, right? Okay, so we we all know about the story of the Baron Trump, right? Mm -hmm. The Baron Trump in the book, Ingersoll yep. Lockwood, right? Yep. yep. Okay. The book is obviously about President Trump. Is on Fifth Avenue. Is he becomes the president? He's the last president. Is last president of the uh, of the uh, the corporation, and then it's the, whatever. So Pence Baron, you look on the cover, he looks just like Trump's son. I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was done two hundred years ago. How many? A hundred and some, hundred and thirty years ago, whatever. That's unusual, right? Okay. I looked it up on YouTube. On I mean, not on YouTube, on the internet. Ingersoll Lockwood Co. dot com. You ready? Okay. It opens up a website for the Department of Defense. Ingersoll. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm not the smartest person in the world. I never claimed it, but I'm just trying to say, if I pull up IngersollLockwoodCo.com and I go to the website and a picture of the Department of Defense comes up, and our mission is to restore the world and save America, and Ingersoll Lockwood is supposed to be a writer from 130 years ago who just so happened to make a story that so happened to explain I'm everything true. that happened in the future. So you mean to tell me, listen, somebody's playing with us. Listen. Listen. <laughs> you keep telling us to get your popcorn. Well, let me tell you this too. So in the gospel of the Holy 12, Jesus talks a lot about reincarnation, which to me absolutely does not go against the Christian faith. You can live many incarnations until you finally get to God and learn and learn stuff. Well, there this is saying that all of the apostles and the disciples, not just the 12 of them, but the however many of the 70, whatever that were falling around would all be back at the end of time so that they all these people are back right now now y'all remember when archbishop vigano started writing those letters to trump those beautiful letters yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. don't y'all think that reminds you a lot of paul paul the letter writer right i'm just putting it out there so what all these times, times. So this is the end of times, which I think it is, because they tried to terrify us in church about Revelation. Like, they tried to scare the crap out of us. Y'all, right. Revelation is the best book ever written. It's the best book ever written. It's not us going through the tribulation. It's not us dealing yeah. with it's them. It's their time. It's the end of their up. world, yeah. It's the end of their world. <sighs> well, you know so, what? You know, who was cute, man? <laughs> You know, because you, you have to, you have to do this. You know, he says, if you knock, if you knock, the door will be open. Yeah. You yes. Ask, you shall you receive. Go. You have Absolutely. to, ask, because people are scared to ask the question. They want a little hard to be broke. And um, I'm going to tell you, there's something to that, man. I'm just, I, you know, I have not been satisfied yet because I'm trying to figure out who, who is this. Where did you come from? Who, I'm going to give you a, a job years prime. Ago. Huh? when we all get to hang out together at Mar-a-Lago and we get to hang out with you, I'm going to let you be the first to ask him that who I, wrote the, I'm going to ask, I'm going to have you ask who wrote the book of Q. Okay. I guarantee you he knows. He knows, doesn't he? I think he knows he, a lot. And I'm going to be honest with you. Somebody sent me a letter one time. They, they sent me something. They said prime. I, when I started talking about time travel. They said, Prime, listen, I'm, I'm from New York. My grandfather knows Trump. He used to play chess with Trump and all this and that. He said, you used to always get mad at Trump because he would always beat him in chess. He said, but he wasn't he wasn't je jealous of Trump because he beat him in chess. She said he was she was she was he was upset with Trump because. I believe it. And they said he, she said they've known this for many, many years in New York City. And when I when she sent me that letter, right, it, it because she she told me who her 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 grandfather was a judge in New York, and she and I, and, 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 I, and I meditated on that, and then I started thinking about, and I started thinking about the years when the 
It really was reigning over the world and really reigning and really particularly in New York, Babylon. You know, New York is Babylon where all the, the, the world leaders trade their goods. And um goes right to New York, right to Babylon and slaps a big gold building right in the middle of Babylon and they can't touch him. I mean, how amazing is it that he's as wealthy as he is and he's not dirty? And he's you not can't. You he, you can't be that. You can't. What is it they say? Like, is it like fifty million or something? There's a mark that if you're over that amount, then you're probably a part of the the system. And he's not. Right. Like, how did that happen? How, how did that happen? How? Everybody loved him before he decided to to run for president. Go ahead, sis. What's up? He reminds me of like a like a King Solomon kind of. That's the vibe I get from him. I'm like, are you King Solomon reincarnated? And that's why you're so wealthy and not a part of the system. That's, that's well, my first thought when I think of him. A lot of the Jeez. biblical figures, figure, excuse me, including Jesus, Trump, ha Trump has the same uh, numerology, gematria, like Abraham, I believe. Uh, Jesus of Nazareth is the same. So you might be hitting on to something there because remember this, we what we're experiencing on our earth as above so below we are experiencing the shadow the effect of what's actually happening in the heavens and so it makes sense to me that different entities would come in through our physical world in this battle if that makes sense and i'm gonna tell you the i've had to block more conservative christians on my channel than any other people because they are the people they they some christians have sent me because i dare to read these heretical gospels and I dare, but to me, all this stuff has just like, it's made my faith in God so much stronger. None of this has challenged my faith. It's just made me go, holy crap. Like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like Sunday school would have been way more fun if we talked about this stuff. So yeah, well, um, they, always, they always tell me, Prime, Prime, don't start straying from the path, Prime. You're getting all into that other stuff. Don't start straying from the path. I said, I'm just asking questions. I'm curious. And God, why do we put God in a box? God isn't a human being. We like to put human opinions on God. That's our mistake. Right. Who's to say that God, we can't put, why, who are we to put boundaries on God, on what God can do? Right. Shame on us. Why can't we, if, if we know, your job as a human being is to like like you said if you are if you love god and you're a good person and you know what it you know what you have to do to hurt someone else and you don't want to do it then that's all you have to worry about and standing up for the truth which i think we're seeing that like crazy right now because they want to lock us down again and we're seeing people just like buck back at this point and and that's what you have to do that you know what, what do they say do uh do no harm but take no shit take no shit that's jesus didn't take any shit Listen, I'm not going to say because I'm trying to be a godly man, but who was going to But listen, I think, I, I'm t I, <laughs> you know, you know, I, I get it all the time. Prime, you shouldn't talk like that. I really love your show, Prime, but when you start swearing, Prime, you just, why do you have to do it? I'd be like, oh, shit, I'm so sorry. Fuck. Let me tell you guys a little, a little tiny history on curse words. They were cockney words. So for the English language, these words that we have, like the shit word, they, were, they got labeled as bad words because they were what the Cockney used, and Cockney was a lower class. So they're actually not like curse words. You're not cursing anybody. Yeah, they're I'm just not elegant words. You, you can curse somebody without swearing. A lot of people, you ain't going oh, to do nothing. That's, that's a curse. But let's check this out, right? I think we really know who this is. And I think we're afraid to <laughs> say it because, listen, the word means source. It means God. Source is God, right? Mm -hmm. So this means God. Q means God. Because nobody knows who he is. Because who can substantiate him? The idea of God is so much bigger than the mortal mind that we Okay, we so what I'm saying is this, right? Q wrote this book many years ago. Who knew Q? Jesus. <laughs> I, I, don't know. I don't know. You know, I mean, isn't why it, is it, it, why is it a mystery? That out of all of the intelligence agencies that's out there, think about it. Out of all of the intelligence agencies that exist, from the NSA, from the Homeland Security, from all this crap that's out there, that's taken down the Illuminati. That's God. Who else God. can take? Who else can take down the Illuminati? Only God, and that's why.
but still alive. Absolutely. We are seeing, what is it Juan says? This is a God moment. This is a God moment. This is a parting of the Red Sea. This is something only God could do. Only. None of us could have gone up against hell. None of us could have gone up against Lucifer. Lucifer is strong. Lucifer has power. <laughs> Slap the shit out. That's my new but nickname. God, God, God can take him down. God can take him down. Right. We are, and um, and um, what is it? Uh, if y'all ever watch Melissa Red Pill, she talks about that, like how the hundred forty-four thousand, how we will have his name on our head. The, the hundred forty-four thousand are those of us who are just who are awake. Amen. You know what? What other time period in history could have this have happened? They used the internet to try to control us. Listen to and me. look what's happened. Check look this what out. Q used. Q yes. used the internet. This wasn't supposed to happen. Listen. This was not a part of no plan. We've been studying prophecy a whole life. There was no predictions that Trump was going to come and this was going to happen and this was going to. There was no, there was, there was no. Why do you think all the pastors disappeared? Well, uh, I believe all the churches are owned by the cabal. So that's just my belief. It doesn't I'm, mean that all your pastors are bad. It's just if you look, if you look, if you look at the seminary schools, you follow the money, they're all owned by the cabal. So you got, you got two decades of Christian theology about a sequence of events that's going to lead to the end. They were all wrong. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. Pretty humbling, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm, an, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing, you know, show me. But see, you know, it's, it's not that it's not that the scriptures are not true. It's just that it didn't happen the way that people thought, the way that they interpreted. No. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody said the only person who said it was Kim Clement and Mark Taylor that I know that said, well, you know, in fairness, in fairness, they didn't have all the information because they were missing a bunch of books. So they didn't have all the information. In fairness, but you're right, Ken Clement. I've gone back and watched a lot of his stuff, and I'm like, holy crap! I'm like, what? This guy was like nailing it. Like, wow! He knew. He knew. Like, amazing, amazing. When, when he when he when he, proph when he prophesied it, it made no sense mm -mm. to a lot of people. Because everybody was waiting for the beast to rise, cut all our heads off. Uh, you know, we were all waiting for that. That was supposed to happen. That's what everybody was waiting for. Nobody was waiting for a president to come and this is going to happen. It's going to these Illuminati are going to be prosecuted. And there's going to be a time of great peace and prosperity. Nobody was expecting that. Free. Nobody was talking about that. That didn't exist. This didn't Our exist. God. That went around. Our God is a loving God. Our God would never do that to us. Like why? That's what I look back now. I'm like, no, this is a tribulation for them. They made their choices. They made their choices. They picked their God. They picked, and their God is Lucifer. And now it's time to pay up. It's time to pay the piper. It's not us. We're not the ones that are going to go through the tribulation. We're the ones that are coming into the thousand years of peace. And that's exciting. Like, I'm so happy. Like, your little boy, my niece, my two nieces, and my nephew, your children, like, it makes me like emotional. Think about the world that they're going to inherit these little souls that are pure and they're going to come into this beautiful existence, you know? Um, wow. Like how amazing is our God? How amazing is the God, the God of the living, the God of the living. I mean, the maritime law that we live under now, which is our birth certificates, which is a whole other, that's the God of the dead. When you're born, that death certificate signed by your parents, that's a DOA. That's a, you're now owned by the, the franchise, by the corporation. That's maritime law which is the law of Satan, the law of the dead, which was the Phoenicians, which were the Canaanites. They were sailors. God of the living is the common law, the God of the land. That's what we're going back to. That's what we're going to be, the, the true law. I mean, amazing, amazing. And they say that we're going to be able to, you know, you know, if we want to get real, real, real uh, sci-fi, that the 97% of our DNA, that's junk DNA, which God don't make junk, we're going to start to activate that now and be able to use. Right. What we've been given. Yeah, but that was that was also biblical. We call, we, that was all, <laughs> but that was also biblical. We called that the glorified body. We we yeah. said that when when we, yeah we said when Christ came that we would get these yeah. new glorified bodies and we would be able to travel at the speed of light and whatever you thought you could manifest. Yeah. We talked about that for years. 
Yeah. I actually asked Janine because I've noticed when I, I'm 38 years old and when I was 34, I started struggling really bad with arthritis, like real bad. Like I had a hard time getting out of bed. I, and all of a sudden when we locked down in 2020, all of that went away. I don't know if it's because I got off medication, but now I feel healthier at 38 than I did at 28. And, and my boyfriend follows the law of one, which is the, the raw material, which is very much mimics what we're talking about. And he, he grew up Methodist, so he's familiar. And he said, you know, in all these prophecies, it says that you will be able to let your, your DNA will be able to start healing itself. And so I asked Janine once and she read the cards and she was like, well, yeah, because you're standing in your truth. So therefore you're letting more light in more. You're getting a light body or the lights coming in to you which is amazing, you know? And so it's, 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 what's I, up? Um, I, I was just going to say like on that note, it's kind of like, you're there, you yeah. about it. what is the actual, well, what's the actual war that's going on? The war is for our physical bodies. I think our physical bodies hold so much more power, mm -hmm. like because we're literally divine beings. I think that that is really the corruption that has been, you know, overshadowing us our entire lives and the entire world for however long all of this has gone, been going on is the lie that our bodies are nothing, in a sense. I feel like the technology that is within our bodies is actually ex way more advanced than we realize. And if you think about it, they want us all dead. Why do they want us dead? Because if we're not physically in this body, we're not physically here, we don't have power here anymore i think the earth is a special realm for some reason you know <laughs> yeah no you're right yeah yeah they and they you know and and they, you see what they've done to our food you know we have this pine needle gland that they've like calcified with fluoride in the water they've done everything to shut us down to weaken our immune system i mean i come from a family of doctors and so my parents were always like giving us those now now I'm horrified, you know, because it's like all of a sudden we realize like this is this is hurting us, you know, so um, they also say at the end of time that we will start to live longer lives. You know, you think about the first the first men of this timeline, Adam and Eve, even Noah lived what 900 years that all of a sudden we're going to start to go back to that as so, longer lives. I don't know if I want to live. Yeah. Years. <laughs> what, did, what did Charlie Ward say? Can you imagine Nancy Pelosi living that long? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I might be ready for the, for the next round by about 900. I need, you know, <laughs> maybe three, four hundred. I'll take three, four hundred. Yeah, like, boy, it's like, I've seen it all. I've done it all. Yeah, I've I've also been, been, I go to another planet now. So, and I'm excited. But, uh, like, how cool is it going to be to, like, meet other beings? You know? <laughs> and, like, yeah. On that yeah. note, I was also, I feel like, I feel like I, I've even said this on my TikTok very briefly. <laughs> Got to got to sprinkle it in there but um yeah. i feel like death is such a such a cop out it's like i feel like we're not really supposed to and, die and, and what, and what, what, do, TikTok, i want i want to put your tiktok up there because i liked your tiktok uh <clears throat> i was on your tiktok i was checking it out you got some bars man <laughs> you was dropping bars man <laughs> real quick real quick underneath a minute drop <laughs> bars it's it's uh yeah. it, I mean it's a nice it's a minute video. <laughs> so so what what what's your, um, what's your it's Liz Olive with two E. Did you tell him about your new store with your t shirts and stuff? Liz what? Oh yeah, I created a t shirt line. Uh it's uh Liz Olive, like the olive you eat, but with two E's at the end. Okay, so that's on TikTok. Then they can connect with you there, right? TikTok. Yeah, there you go. That's the right. I always mess it up. Yeah, and then what? Yeah, what? What Bryce was saying is, I created a uh, t-shirt line that'll probably eventually turn into like a clothing line, but starting with t-shirts first. Uh, that all have yeah. deeper meanings and such, and that's on Etsy. So you but, got some controversial yeah. content uh, uh, on on site. Some messaging on your t-shirts. It's subtle though. <laughs> it's like it's like the planting of the seed kind of thing. I hear that. I hear you should have had one on so we could have saw it. But next time we'll do we'll do this again and then you know so we can continue oh, to build. Yeah. Well, I'm outside yeah. and it's hot, so I'm like <laughs> Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're all East Coasters, right? So we know the heat <laughs> on the East Coast is awful this time of year. <laughs> and, and, and Bryce, you're on YouTube, right? Yeah, I'm up on YouTube, Esoteric Atlanta. We're trying our best to keep everything up, guys. The censorship has gotten unbelievable, which means that they are running scared. If they're, I mean, yeah. even the drama channels are starting to be affected by by this yeah, stuff. Yeah, but um, Esoteric Atlanta. Uh, now your your link is all in the description box, just so for the people. Now, I just want to put it on the screen for people who may not have access to the description box. But all their links, guys, are, is in the description box to the TikTok to the to the YouTube. Make sure you get over there and subscribe and follow these great patriots. And uh, I know I spelled this wrong, um, Bryce. I don't want to even put it up yet till I confirm. Esoteric. E S O T E R I C. Yes, Atlanta. A T L A N T A. On YouTube. Okay, so that's you on YouTube. So make sure you get over there and subscribe. You see she got a wealth of knowledge for you. And break your hey, little heart. You're a Christian. You're gonna she's gonna break your little heart, your little Christian you. <laughs> well, I, if you guys are interested in all of the missing books of the Bible that we've read through, I do have a playlist from the Dark Outpost, which is everything we've read on David Zublick's channel. You can listen to the commentary if you want to hear the books, like hear them being read out loud. Some people prefer that. I always suggest get your own though. Like I'm not an expert. I'm just really, really like prime and like Elizabeth. I just want to learn. Like I want to yeah. see it. Yeah. You know. I think, I, think, I, think the, I think. I think the smarter you, the smarter you get. Uh, the less dogmatic you become because I used to be very dogmatic till I realized I was wrong about a lot of things. And um, so I, I tell people now I'm not a teacher. I'm a learner. I'm a learner. I just share what I learn. And um, I'm not the one that knows everything, even though I'm right about a lot of stuff, but it's okay. I'm not going to, I'm right about a whole lot of stuff, but I don't want, you know, I don't need a trophy or a statue, but the thing is, is I'm still learning and I'm, and I'm, and I'm willing to be wrong if I have to be, you know, to get to the truth. So, yeah. Absolutely. We're all, one of my favorite spiritual teachers says that we're all just walking each other home. We're all just walking each other home. We're all sharing information. We're trying to figure it out together before we have all the answers. And so, yeah, I do. Everybody should have these texts themselves, read them the sex themselves, share your opinions on them yourselves. You know, we're all valuable. We've had enough of this narrative nonsense. All right. So if we can figure out if the Q who apparently is the author and the originator of all of the gospels that we just found out a couple weeks ago, because nobody knew this for the last four decades. You kidding me? I mean, since the fourth century. So for like what, 1700 I've years, I had no idea. I've never heard of this one time. Listen. 1700 <laughs> years, that just hit me for 1700 years. 1700 years, we had no idea about Q. 1700. And then we found out 1700 years later, because we're getting up to the actual date, which would mark because we're 2021. So that's around the time. I think it was somebody 325. Messing somebody is messing with us. Sorry? Somebody is messing with us. And if 1700 around, years, literally 1700 years. So if the author of the Gospels, which is Q, who is, <laughs> come on, I give up. I'm by. I'll talk to you guys later. I'm not. I'm done. I'm Just, done, man. Guys, minute, minute prime meets Trump. That's going to be his question. The first question he's going to ask <laughs> who wrote the Gospel of Q? Who wrote the Gospel of Q? Who wrote the book? Seriously. Because nobody can tell you who he is. Think about it. Something this that important that all of, the, all of the Gospels are based off of this book and nobody knows who this is? Isn't it? Isn't this is just the greatest story ever told? It's the greatest story ever told. Talk about a cliffhanger, right? Bryce, we got to. I want to pick this up where we left off the next time you come back. Absolutely, when more than go, happy to. You go on your uh, deep dive, and when you come back, we're gonna we're gonna finish this one. We're gonna figure out who this guy is. <laughs> we're on his trail. We're on your trail. <laughs> yep. <laughs> for sure. I love you guys. And my sister, it's a pleasure meeting you and I wish you the best. Um, you too. Peace and protection. Thank you for having you. me. <laughs> Definitely. You feel welcome to come anytime. And um, uh, Bryce, if you would, just get her the email so that way we can schedule and we'll continue to network. Oh, yeah. She, she's got Veronica's number. She's all yeah. good. We're all, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, um, and I'll, I'll talk to you too, Bryce. Let's talk offline real quick just for a couple minutes if you're available. Yeah. Okay. Just text me. Yeah. Yeah, All or right. call me, whatever. Yeah. All right. Love you guys, man. I salute you with the peace of God until next time. Bye. Where are we go?